Welcome back everybody, welcome back to another video. And uh, there was to be one kind of free flight around Fort Jefferson down in the Key West, Florida. We're in a HH-60 Whiskey Payfock. Some call it Payfock. Payfock's kind of the older golf model. But uh, we're in the HH-60 Whiskey, which is the Air Force version of the UH-60 Mike. The HH-60 Golf Payfock is the Air Force version of the UH-60 Alpha Mimo model. But uh, this is kind of their version of the Mike model. It's got, for the most part, all the same instruments and everything. Glass cockpit, same systems and whatnot. But uh, I'll just go ahead and take sure on the helipad here. We're already at 90 knots. That's uh, accelerates pretty fast. And I also don't think we'd be at 30% torque on approach. That'd be like dropping your collective pretty substantially. I keep being probably a uh, uh, 1500 feet per minute, 1500 to 2000 feet per minute descent rate. If you drop that down to 30% in real aircraft, that is definitely not something you want to do. I guess almost dropping it straight to the floor. Dropping it straight to the floor will get you about 25, 20 to 25%. One thing with the payfuck is that, as you can see, it has this uh, refuel boom out. So you, if you go, let me just try to demonstrate this. If you go too far down your landings, that's gonna hit. So, you definitely don't want to do that. You kind of have to keep a nose high attitude. And uh, that's also why it's a good fit for the UH-60. Because you could use any helicopter they wanted to. But UH-60 is a very versatile helicopter. And they definitely want a helicopter with a nose up hover. So that it doesn't, so the boom does not strike on landing. But uh, yeah. So for takeoff, pretty much what we're gonna do, you've already watched two of them, but take off. I want a tad bit of aft cyclic. As you increase the collective, add in left pedal and aft cyclic. And then just kinda hold it in about five usually around a five degree nose up attitude at hover. That all depends on wind of course and the other conditions. But Generally, you're around five degrees nose up. Work down with that, and you want to take off. You're gonna add in about 10 to 15 percent over your hover torque, and you're gonna put your nose about five degrees down. And that's pretty standard takeoff. And then we can kind of follow the pattern now out to the left because there's no pattern here but we're just going to kind of go out to the left here alright I'm going to go up to about 500 feet 90 knots 500 feet for now 500 feet 90 knots whatever they think Autopilot. Let's go 120 knots. It's a little on the faster side, but so be it. And I'll bring it down to 100. Alright, so I'm just gonna do kind of controls. What's on the controls? So this trim button. 
is your Z axis. You can use that to turn on your auto hover, disengage your autopilot, a lot of that. Your remote standby here. You can um, click that and it will disengage all the modes that you've selected or put them on standby. This is your collective trim beeper. So that will adjust your vertical speed if you have vertical speed selected. That will adjust your radar altitude if you have your radar altimeter set on your autopilot. Everything like that. You got your cursor slew for your MFDs. You got your landing light and your searchlight. And you got the HUD. On the Lima model, the HUD was down where this collective trim beeper was. And they didn't have a collective trim beeper on the Lima model. But uh, they do in the mic model due to the autopilot systems. So, they also moved the servo switch from up here on the collective around where this cursor slew is up to your miscellaneous miscellaneous switches up there so uh, that's kind of new on the mic model generally the uh, kind of the grip is the same to change a few buttons around but pretty much the same as Lima the psych looks where all the major changes were made obviously you got you had to go around button on the Lima before you had your trim release this back button back there is your trim release that I just clicked down okay remote standby go around button if I hit go around right now check go around let's see if it'll let me go around is it implemented? it should be implemented let's engage this back, turn the go around off to go around no? should not? okay I've used it before, so that's weird. Should be implemented. Let's try this one more time after the turn. Go around. There we go. Usually it puts you at 70 knots, I believe it is. And then it puts you in a climb of around 700 feet per minute, 700 to 1200. This is a bit shallow, but as you can see, this is a good time to showcase the collective beeper. As you can see, as I move it around, it will adjust this. But yeah, and then move the bumper back if I can get it to go back instead of paying the butt here in the sim. It increases your vertical speed and it down decreases it. Go back down to 500 feet. 100 knots. Heading of 220. Alright. Um, I also move the hydraulic. Your backup hydraulic pump. From over here where your fire detection test is and your lamp test and everything. A lot of test switches are over there for your testing different systems and whatnot. They move that up to the by the um, miscellaneous switches as well for your back hydraulic pump and your hydraulic leak test. So uh, they added in these uh, FMSs, of course, glass cockpit, flight director, standby instruments, your backup radio head. Um, they added in, of course, for your standby instruments. Um, due to the due to the extra systems, they added in another battery. So we got two batteries now. So they moved your APU and everything down to the second row. Hooks are still the same. Um, pilot heat and everything, windshield anti ice. That's all the same there. Um, lights are switched around slightly. Um, all your interior lights, instead of having some of them over here on your pilot and command side, or some of them over on the right seat, some for the left seat to control your own, they're, for the most part, all controlled over there in the co-pilot seat. So 
gonna go ahead and just a turn here and then I'll continue. Alright. So Yep, you have your air source, fuel pump, APU control, external power. So if you have anything hooked up, basically external power. It's a little generator that plugs into the aircraft that provides you power while you're on the ground so you don't need your APU on. But um we use that occasionally, not a whole lot. Usually we just turn the APU. Alright, so we got some standby instruments. Of course, battery 1, battery 2, APU, Gen 1, Gen 2, of course you can all test. This little box up here will kind of tell you what's going on with the different aircraft systems. It'll tell you like if your APU's on, if it's off, you know, your standby instrument test. Basically, when you test the stuff, it'll basically tell you what's working. It'll the little light will illuminate on there. It'll illuminate what you're testing. It'll basically just tell you if it's working or not. Just like to see if I can test standby instruments. I just turned the battery off. See how it goes. I'm testing it. It says standby. Good. Battery good. Such a good thing. Back good. Back good, that's good. Yeah. So that's pretty good that it does. Circuit breakers. Obviously there's a few more circuit breakers up in here. For more systems, more circuit breakers, it's kind of common sense. Um I just pick another turn. And then I'm gonna come to land. Alright. So, uh. Your EGIs are new. And everything. Um. You have your. Handhold over here. This can be used for a lot of things. It can be used to control your cursor. Uh, slew your FLIR, but usually only the medevacs have FLIR, just the standard UH-60 mics do not have FLIR, most of them, some of them do. But like the EH-60s, the electronic warfare version of the Blackhawk does, the uh, HH-60, the um, medevac version does, um, Payfox do, the one that we're in right now it does, but it's not implemented, I don't believe, unfortunately. That'd be cool to play around with. Right, let's go ahead and descend to 300 feet. 70 knots. And let's just go... 020. I'm just trying to buy some time. This would be, would be going a lot faster than this in real life, but I'm just trying to buy some time here. But, um... Your dome lights aren't implemented yet. Um, but you're not gonna be doing much flying at night in this sim anyways because you don't have night vision or anything implemented. Um, maybe there's a reshade preset out there for it. I don't know. Maybe there's just something I'm missing, but anyways. Instead of having your tailwheel lock up here, it's now down by your parking brake. So you have everything for your brakes, your tailwheel and everything. Or your tear wheel and everything kind of all down there then you have your arc 231 down there just your backup radio head um, pretty much just radio stuff um, just comms standard comms um, I don't know it's why it's more time currently only the nav page the transponder page and clear button and comms is working which is all you really need for this kind of flying around flight plan would be nice to have but this system can be kind of complex um, any of you real world pilots know what I'm talking about but it's not as bad as the Lima models the Lima's was pretty confusing I just engage autopilot and just 
kind of do an outro a bit here. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the differences between the mic model and the older Alpha and Neo models. Although we do still have quite a bit of Neo models still in service. The Alpha models, I do believe, have been completely retired. But uh, once we get kind of up here, I'll show you some external differences. Um, of course this is a pay fox, so I'll get the black hawk and then I'll show you some external differences and whatnot. Now to generally for diesel, about a 10 degree snow zip attitude tends to work pretty good. Um, of course that may vary. If you're trying to come in a bit hotter, do an LZ. Say you're coming in pretty hot, you know, you're 60 knots, you're real close. You're going to do a train flight diesel. Just decrease collective so that you don't gain the altitude and just try to slow as fast as you can without um, decreasing altitude or without increasing altitude I'm sorry but I have a whole video on that so I'm not gonna go too far into that all right that is pretty rough landing but let me switch over to the mic model or the Blackhawk sorry they're all pretty much mics I'm just gonna go to the Blackhawk though all right Okay, so pretty basic stuff on the Lima models. If you look at some old videos, the Lima's the exhaust up here is different. On the Mike model, it has more of an upward facing exhaust, and on the Lima model, it has kind of cover coming over it that pushes that exhaust downwards. The Mike model pushes this exhaust up into the rotors. So, that's a pretty noticeable difference. That's definitely the biggest. The other ones are very, very subtle. So subtle that I don't even know that they're even really implemented in here. I'm trying to look around for them. But I think for the most part, it's a Lima model, except for the exhaust. The other ones are super subtle, or subtle, I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the differences. Um, like and subscribe for more aviation content. And, uh, if you want to see some real world stuff, I may be able to get some real world stuff going, but no promises. But, uh, oh, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in another video.